All right, welcome back guys. As promised, I have the Lexus RX 450E, all four. And I brought back the car enthusiast to take a spin in it. I did a walk around video of my thoughts of it this morning. I've driven a little bit, wife's driven a little bit, brought back the car enthusiast to talk about it. He had some interesting research done on how you get the federal tax credit and if you do even qualify for it. So very unique car. Let's see what he thinks about it. All right, welcome back. So what do you think of Lexus's $67,000 golf cart? And that's exactly what it is. Um, it's a golf cart that uh, really has some interesting uh, build quality about it. Interior-wise, fit and finish, uh, really nice. Um, you know, it's laid out well, the way that it presents uh, and looks from, you know, the information that you receive on the, uh, behind the steering wheel, good stuff. The uh, screen, the way it's positioned uh, ergonomically, this is a pretty well put together car but I'm amazed at when you step out or get off the accelerator how the uh, oh, I'll keep going here. Um, the way this slows down it, it really throttles right immediately down uh, it, it's a you know heads-up display good heads-up display nice and clear crystal clear um, but it really is one of those type of cars that it belongs on uh, uh, Arrowhead Golf Course not than it does really on any street or highway until you put on the accelerator and that that's amazing uh, the torque is very pronounced we've got it in sport mode uh, and you put you put the throttle down and it's it'll snap your net your head back big time but all the other modes suck <laughs> they're just, they're absolutely not as responsive, that's for sure. Sport mode, definitely, you're all, you're in total, you know, almost race mode. Your RC car race mode. Right. Now, when we charge this for the last 40 hours, because when they brought it to me, I don't have a level 2 charger or charging cord. Um, I had to use the level 1, which took forever to charge. It took almost 40 hours to give us 186 miles. 196 is the perfect range on the window sticker. Um, but as soon as you turn on the heater, as soon as you turn on your heated steering wheel, as soon as you use any part of this luxury package, your mileage goes down. So we've only went probably a total of 30 miles since we charged up to 186, and we only have 113 miles left. Now... You can run it in range mode, which takes all the fun and power away. You can run in eco, which changes everything. And sport's the only fun one. Um, doesn't really change anything with steering or anything like that. Now, interesting enough, he had some information about federal tax credit. So does does this car qualify for all those fancy rebates to lure you in to buy it? it if you lease it, you get the $7,500 government credit. If you buy it, because it's made in Japan, you don't get the credit. Huh, kind of crazy. That's kind of the whole hype of getting one of these, you know, basically. It's just one of those deals where it's it's, it's incredible you don't get all of that extra money for it. And you got to be careful because leasing sometimes is about the same as purchasing and sometimes purchasing is about the same as leasing. So you have to see which one even makes sense. So we got some windy road here. We're going to see how it carves out. We're going to have him get into it a little bit and see what he thinks. I mean, it handles really well. Uh, this particular style is is a hatchback-like cross-trek uh, build, so it uh, it's very it's sporty. It is definitely sporty, uh, and it actually handles things pretty well. I'm sure the uh, the underneath, if we were to look at that they've probably got some pretty heavy duty anti sway bar uh, configuration I bet the axle uh, going to each one of the wheels I bet that is pretty beefy too because uh, you can feel that it's pretty well put together but man when you step on the accelerator wow I mean that is immediate uh, yeah you gotta be put the accelerator you gotta watch it it uh, it'll get a hold it'll get away from you if you're not careful 
and it will straight throw you back. Um, and um, it, it brings a smile to your face. The wife enjoyed it. He's enjoying the power. But again, if you use all that power, guys, you use all these lights, all this gizmetry, everything, you're going to lose range. And so if you think you can buy one of these and go with just the level one charger, you're going to be gravely mistaken, um, especially if you even travel and you're you know, have stuck with using that charger, uh, you're going to be kind of up the creek if the person doesn't have the ability to charge it for a level two. So if you drive somewhere and you want to use even heat, be prepared to not be able to drive that far. And heaven forbid you ever get caught in a blizzard where you have to use defroster and heat and all that stuff. And you're thinking, oh, we'll just stop and charge halfway. Well, other people are thinking that too. So it's just kind of a unique circumstance. So now that we've been driving this for just a little bit, I want to go back and talk about something that he mentioned earlier in the video is this vehicle makes zero noise. So I don't know if you can hear those motors kind of whining up, but there's really no, no sound at all. And I think to a lot of people that have been driving for a long time, that engine's a way that we can kind of gauge performance, something going on, and we kind of enjoy it, right? Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. I mean, it, it's part of the experience of driving is hearing uh, you know what the engine's doing this even in a turn uh, as you're going down the road and you, you'll hear everything that's happening with the accelerator and all the uh, inner workings of the engine with this um, you know you get the you get the feel when you're actually moving of how the, the torque is and everything along those lines but uh, I, I use the engine sound as much as I do anything uh, and this without that it really gives it a fake feeling in my opinion uh, using just all electric yeah it's, it's really crazy and and to spend you're talking sixty six sixty seven thousand dollars the sound system isn't any better than the BNO. It's good. It's not any better than the Clips or all these other systems that are high end out there. But really, at sixty-seven thousand dollars, you can buy like three Corolla hybrids. I mean, you get about the same trunk space, you get about the same vibe, and uh, you can actually fill up in five minutes and have five hundred miles of range. This one's going to take you at least thirty. You know, if yeah, you do level two. Absolutely, and you know, even with a, uh, it, even with a Corolla. At least you can buy a six-speed uh, that really gives you the ability to control the way that you're you're driving with this. I mean, accelerator, push the gas, let off the gas, because as soon as you let off, uh, you know the the accelerator it immediately slows the vehicle almost down to to zero. Um, you know, it, it really it's it's a golf cart. It's a really high-end golf cart. Yeah. And we've talked about other circumstances where where this car really fits. This car doesn't fit in the suburbs, right? Yeah. This is a downtown. You drive two miles to and from your place, right? It, it, this is an urban, uh, you know, machine. Uh, it's not something for suburbs and any desire to drive anywhere long distance. I would even say medium distance. This probably doesn't have a place. Right. Yeah, it, it really, really doesn't. So we're kind of out here in the middle of nowhere. We are going to kind of just get into it and see how much it throws us back in the seat. Okay, I'm going to almost go to zero. Uh, let's go four. Ready? Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, they've said that this car can do zero to 60 in about four seconds, right? Four and a half yeah. seconds? Four and a half seconds. Every bit of that. Yeah, and uh, I, I'll agree with that. I mean, it, it, it's the torque. Uh, you know, again, electric vehicle, of course, it's going to be immediate. Uh, you know, we're, your gas powered uh, engines are going to have a little bit of a, a lag. There is absolutely zero lag in this car when you hit the accelerator. Yeah. I mean, it. You can definitely, if, if that is your vibe, is if that's what you want, um, an electric car is going to fit right in. Uh, if, if you want the ability to drive something that gives you a little bit of feedback, it's not the car for you. Right. 
and really like you were saying earlier it really doesn't belong anywhere unless you're short distance you never want to use the heater you never want to use any of the toys that's in here and then at that point you basically have a golf cart with a cab right <laughs> it, if you're not living in a place it's 70 degrees day and night uh, because it can't doesn't function well if it's too hot uh, it doesn't function well if it's too cold uh, it, it's just when you're trying to make sure the batteries are heated and cooled properly to give you any uh, you know length of driving driving experience you, it just won't work unless it's 70 degrees all the time yep exactly and I'm just not sure at the at the cost point we've we've passed probably five different gas stations on this very short drive we've lost about 50 miles in range um, but we've passed zero charging stations, so that's also going to be somewhat of an issue for a lot of people. So the million dollar question, you buying this car? No, hell no. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, it, it's not, um, no way, no how would I buy this car. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, guys, well, I will second his motion. Uh, other than being a fun little go-kart to jaunt around, I don't have the time in my life to sit at charging stations for hours or to let my $67,000 car sit in the driveway or in the garage for 40 hours to charge it with a regular outlet. And I don't find the value in uh, sitting on trips waiting at the gas station. So there you have it. There's the car enthusiast review of the 23RX 450E all four. And we're all not for it. Yes. See you on the next one. Yes.